G'day folks and welcome to Gourmet Shed. Hope you all had a good Easter. And uh, what we're looking at uh, this uh, episode is yard lighting and how to make your own. And uh, I've come up with this system here. Uh, this is a, a prototype. This is actually not a working light, but uh, this is the test uh, version. And uh, it's made from very simple materials and uh, it's very flexible. So I can take a few knocks. So um, I'll uh, get into uh, showing you how it's uh, put together. And it's put together uh, using very simple materials. I mean, the, the mast here is actually a cocktail drinking straw. They're very slim straws. Uh, the, there's um, a ball on the top of the, the mast here, which is actually a, a pin. Uh, you can buy a lot of this stuff from um, uh, pound stores or two dollar shops. <laughs> Uh, it's, this is a pin with a plastic head on it, a ball head. Uh, so you can get a, a packet of those for practically nothing. Uh, the um, light cover here is um, what they call a screw cap, which is a plastic screw cap. And I'll show you in the, in the video all these things. Um, the idea is that there's an inner part of this, uh, which is separate, which fits onto the screw head and then this cap goes over the actual screw head. Uh, the size of this one here actually for 00 HO scale is probably a little on the big side because this works out to about probably three scale feet across which is a bit on the big side. Um, but the inner part which I'm using for the, uh, the second build, the, the working light, um, is considerably smaller and it's around about the two foot, two foot six mark, two foot six probably. Um, so that'll that'll be more realistic, I suppose. And at the base here, we've got a rivet which has a, a three millimeter shaft. So you take the shaft out, and that becomes the base of the light. And around the bottom here, I've wrapped masking tape. Now, masking tape tends to have a bit of a texture to it, and um, I've even done the second one with the masking tape. And I think, on reflection, uh, probably uh, electrical tape would give a cleaner um, result. However, Using a three foot rule, folks, it looks fine. So it's up to you. But uh, to get to, to put one of these lights together, the cost is about 30 cents. So the, the, the caps at the moment are the dearest part. Uh, I've got a packet of 12 of those for three bucks at Bunnings. Um, you can buy them in bulk, but um, I'm also looking into another way of doing it. I've got some uh, parts on order from Hong Kong which won't arrive for another couple of weeks. But um, yeah, th this is how it comes up. So we'll get into the actual build of a light and, uh, and then you can see how it all goes together. Well folks, this is uh, what we're using. It's the snap-on screw caps available from Bunnings. Uh, the idea is that the, uh, there's two parts in here. There's the outer cap and the inner cap. The inner cap goes over the screw head and the outer cap clips on over the top of that. You can see them better here. This one here is um, the, the larger one and we have a rectangular hole in this one here. Now I, I prefer to use the inner one now because it's slightly smaller and you can see that the, um, the outer one is close to 12 millimeters, which is three scale feet. Uh, whereas the inner one, the rim of it's showing is 10 millimeters, but the actual um, wall I would estimate is somewhere around about nine. So closer to uh, two foot six or a bit less, which is okay. Now the problem with the, um, <coughs> the inner one is the rectangular hole in, in the middle. So we need to be able to fill that up. So the way to do it is to use a three millimeter uh, flat washer, uh, which will accept a three millimeter LED, and all these pieces are super glued together. And you can see the LED will fit nicely in there. And we're also using cocktail straws. Uh, these are approximately 130 millimeters long and three millimeters in diameter. And for the ball on top of the, uh, the post, I'm using these ball head pins, which are readily available from $2 shops or pound shops. And uh, it's up to you. You can either um, hold the pin with a pair of pliers and screw the ball off or cut the pin close to the ball. I prefer to cut the pin myself. 
and we're also using um, a rivet uh, which is approximately 50 mil long but it's the important thing is it's got a three millimeter shaft uh, and when once that's removed uh, it leaves um, a nice base there for the tube to go into or the straw to go into the um, housing for the light is sprayed white on the inside before the whole thing is assembled and then the uh, anode and cathode leads on the LED are bent to shape and I'm using my cutting mat or the grid on the cutting mat as a guide for um, repetitive cutting so I've got a little silver mark which you can see just there which determines where the, uh, the top piece will go and then uh, once it's all set up and lined up properly uh, the pieces can be marked out and, uh, and then cut you can see the lines on there ready for cutting so that's what they're like when they're trimmed up then a couple of fine wires are soldered to the ends of the um, the LED leads uh, I use uh, old computer leads I strip them down and inside you'll find maybe 10 or 15 very fine wires which are very useful for this sort of thing test it of course to make sure it works before you start putting it all together and then I'd take the um, very fine cocktail straw and tape it down to my cutting mat now I've taped it down this is the top here and there's only a little bit of uh, masking tape coming over the end there and the base is held down quite firmly and I do that so that I can mark it out for the uh, holes for the uh, LED so you can see I've just marked it there and I will use a pin initially one of the uh, ball head pins to make a hole where the marks are and you can see that's done and then I use a very small uh, drill bit just between my fingers to drill out the uh, pilot holes to make room for the wires to go through and it takes very little pressure to do this you can easily do it between your fingers now as I said I want um, 100 millimeters in length so that's the 100 millimeters there so I need to know where the rivets going to finish on the tube so I will mark that position on the on the tube like so and then I take some masking tape which is 18 millimeters wide by 30 millimeters long and that will be wrapped around the tube to create a bit more profile and it looks like that now on reflection masking tape has a bit of a texture to it so if you want a cleaner uh, finish on this part of the post uh, possibly electrical tape would give a, a better um, finish uh, then it's a matter of feeding the wires through down the tube and pulling the uh, LED into place there and once it's in place everything is super glued to hold it tight we then take the ball which has had its pin trimmed and super glue that into the top of the post now the uh, light cover can be super glued in place but because the LED protrudes slightly below the uh, the base of the cover there I've had to raise it up so that um, the whole thing can be glued flat and that's just held in position until the uh, the super glue goes off uh, once the glue has gone off uh, it's a good idea to put a bit of masking tape underneath the light so that none of the spray goes up under there because we've just sprayed that white so we want to keep that clean and then I've sprayed it gloss black enamel in this case and that's how it's come up and before it's uh, fixed onto the uh, baseboard uh, we need to uh, introduce a resistor into the uh, one of the wires there um, I work on a maximum of 12 volts but I use variable transformers so it could come down as low as 3 or 4 so you need to use the right resistor for whatever voltage you're using and then uh, a hole is drilled to accept the uh, the rivet base <coughs> and the um, 
the light is pushed into place. And then we do some testing to make sure it works and there you have it. Okay folks, well that's how it's done. It's uh, fairly straightforward I think, fairly simple and very cheap and the uh, the bonus with these things is they, they are quite flexible. If you wanted to um, move into O-Gauge you could probably use a standard drinking straw and uh, work out your parts from there. The, the only part you've really got to work out is the hood for the or the cover for the lamp and uh, there's all sorts of stuff around folks if you just have a look. Anyway, I'll leave you with it. See you next time. Cheers. Gourmet.